Okay, so this is again a lecture for both classes, Calc 4 and Calc 2. Uh, differential equations, uh, applications of some applications of first order differential equations. It is, I guess, lecture 29 for Calc 4 and lecture 21 for Calc 2. Uh, okay, now the first type of problem we discussed is uh, mixing problems. A mixing problem is a problem like this. You suppose you have a tank full of something, like in this case, usually they say salt, so it might be uh, like a salt water, say fish tank or something, whatever. And uh, so it is. Uh, it, let's assume that the volume of uh, salt water in the tank is V. I have written tank with volume V, I should say a tank with uh, salt water of volume V inside. But let's assume that it is full. Then we, as, we just let uh, the function Q, T, which is uh, Q stands for quantity. So. Qt is the amount of salt in the tank at time t. So that's the exact amount. Now we want to find Qt, uh, Q as a function of time. So and we are given certain things. Q0 is given, which is the amount of salt in the tank at time 0. So it uh, usually tells you that the tank has this much salt at the beginning. Sometimes it says absolutely nothing but we are adding salt to it, okay? It's like a, a fish tank which is full of like uh, fresh water and you want to turn that into salt water, something like that. Uh, then it gives you the rate and density of salt in the water flowing in. So uh, that in here, it will give you the rate of flow as a cubic feet per, or cubic, say something cubic. Uh, uh, say meters m3 over uh, seconds or cubic feet per second say and then it also gives uh, something uh, the amount of salt uh, the density of salt per uh, cubic feet so it uh, gives you something like pounds per cubic feet so uh, we will see in, uh, when I give you an example you will see how that thing works and then it uh, assumes that the uh, Outflow uh, is the same as the inflow, if the, that is the cubic feet per second, not the amount of salt, the density. Because density that goes out is changing, in fact. So we assume that the density of salt in this flow is uh, constant. We also assume that the in and out, the flow in and out are the same. If they are not the same, then the problem is order and it needs, uh, uh, say, different, uh, I mean, systems of the differential equations. We will get a system of differential equations. Well, so this, uh, this is like the baby steps we are taking. So we assume that, that's the third one here, assume, assume that the water is leaving at, uh, the tank at the same rate as it enters the tank. So that's the rate of flow, not the uh, density of salt in water. That's the rate of flow. Okay, so let me erase this. A mixing problem, example, say. Let's assume that Q at the time zero is uh, 20, say, kilograms, say. And let's assume that the uh, rate of uh, salt water in is uh, I don't know like a two I'm just writing some uh, two uh, m three over second uh, over s and that is the same as the rate of going out density of salt in the flow inflow, let's say, let's assume that it is 0.1, say, kilograms per m3, 
and we assume that uh, as it goes out, it has the same rate as this. So rate in, rate, rate of salt water in is 2 and going out is also 2. Uh, what else do I need? Oh, the volume. Volume at the beginning, let's assume it is too big. So let's say it is 1000, say, entry. Okay, find a QT, the amount of salt at time T. Amount of salt in the tank at time T. Okay, so that's the amount of salt in the tank at time T. Uh, okay, so now the main idea or the main equation comes from uh, the fact that uh, rate in equals rate out. Rate of salt in equals rate of salt out. And that is, uh, no, not equals, rate of salt in minus rate of salt out is the rate of uh, salt change of uh, salt in the tank. So dq dt is uh, just imagine change in salt in tank depends on how much is entering and what is going out right so that's what we call rate in minus rate out okay that is the change in rate the change in the amount of salt in the tank so that rate in and rate out are in fact the rate of salt in and rate of salt out and uh, not the rate of salt water in and rate of salt water out. This is just for salt, rate of salt in. See, this is like kilograms per second. This is kilograms per second. This should be kilograms per second. And this also kilograms per second. Not cubic meters per second. Okay, cubic meters per second is that, that that's the salt water. In that salt water, there is some salt. So when it enters, it also uh, something is also entering, and that is uh, we will see what that what is entering. In fact, this is uh, how we solve it. Is in fact writing this and this and then so on, right? So, so the formula. Let me let uh, write it here. So let me write it here for mixing. Uh, this is the general idea of general formula. And that is uh, dq dt, dq dt is rate in minus rate out. So if you remember this form, uh, this say simple formula, you can come up with a solution. So now, well, let me write it here. So dq dt is the rate in. What is rate in? Rate in is uh, a rate of salt water, complete salt water that is entering times the density of salt in this. Okay, so that is in fact 2 cubic meters per second times 0.1 kilograms per cubic meters, right? So this is kilograms per second. Minus, what is rate out? I assume that rate out has it's the same thing. But what is the density of the salt that is going out? The density of salt that is going out is in fact, that's very simple, because it's the density of salt in the tank. At any moment, density of salt in the tank is changing. So at this time, T, whatever that moment in time is, the density of salt in the tank is simply QT over V. Okay, so that is QT over V. Okay, so let's uh, plug in some numbers here. The only thing I have to uh, plug in is this 1000. Otherwise, this one, is still, this one is here. So this is 1000. Do I have anything else? Because I want to erase this right hand side 
Uh, so maybe space to write down. Uh, okay, so, so I got dq dt is uh, 2 times point 0.1, that's point 0.2 minus, uh, this is 2 over 1000, that is uh, 0 0.002, right? Times Q. Okay, that is 0 0.002 times Q. Well, this is a simple differential equation. You can either solve it as a linear system or you can solve it as a uh, like separable system. It depends on your choice. I solve it in, uh, as a separable system. I, I, I like that more. So let's uh, do it this way. Usually separable is, I'm not saying it's easier, but if somebody has not taken a course in differential equations, he can still uh, understand what's going on. So, for separable equation, uh, I always factor this out, the minus, 0, 0, 2, and inside I have Q minus, uh, that is 0, 0, 0.002 divided by uh, 0 0.02, and that's 100, right? Yeah, that's 100. So, uh, point, uh, two, so uh, yeah, that's it. So, let, let me double check my calculation. That is 2 over 1000, that is in fact um, 1, 2, 3, that's correct. So, Okay, so, then I look at this and I see that it can be uh, separated. This is Q and this is Q here and I have T here. So I separate this as DQ over Q minus 100. On this side, I have minus 0 0.002 DT. Okay, so integrate this thing, 1 over q minus 100 dq is uh, integral minus 0 0.002 dt plus a constant. So on this side I have ln of q minus 100 and you see why I did this. Some students tend to bring everything here here and just write dt over there and then they get confused what uh, how to integrate uh, that that thing. So the denominator would be 0.2 minus 0.002 q, and then they write uh, they they integrate that incorrectly. Uh, so if you keep this in one, it's much easier to integrate this. And on this side, I have minus 0.002 t plus a constant. Right. So <laughs> that is. Uh, I do not, or you shouldn't stop here. You have to continue and find Q, right? And we can find Q, it's not that hard. So uh, this will be, this gives me Q minus 100 is e to power right hand side minus 0 0.002t uh, plus a constant. So that's e to power minus 0.002t times e to power c. And I wrote this thing as another constant b, minus 0 0.002t. And this equals q minus 100, absolute y. Okay, so. Uh, okay, now. In this, in this e to power c, which is b here, it is a positive number. e to the power anything is positive. Uh, so I, here I can say b is a positive number, it's not zero. Can't be zero or below zero. So, uh, but if I remove this uh, absolute value sign, I can uh, do this. So, removing the absolute value sign, I will write it like this. So I say q minus will be e to power minus point 
zero zero two T times B. And uh, I just write B a constant to be determined, right? B is a constant to be determined. Now the, this gives me Q as a function of time, is in fact B e to the power minus 1, 0, 0, 2, t plus 1. So this is my solution, except I need some initial condition to find the B. What was the initial condition? I can't remember what I wrote for Q at time 0. Maybe I wrote 2, 2 I can't remember something like that. Well, let's say this is Q, Q yeah. and uh, I can't remember, so let's put a question mark. But anyway, that is a, as I said, with 20 kilograms. Uh, so Q at time 0 will be e to the power 0 is 1, B plus 100. So, and this should be 20. So B is 80. Uh, no, B is uh, minus 80. Minus 80. So Q, T, will be 100 minus 80 e to the power minus 0 0.002 t. So, this is in fact the amount of salt in the tank at any time. So that is in fact the solution, amount of salt, amount of salt, that is in kilograms in fact, at time t in the tank. So what does it look like as a, let's uh, graph this thing and see what happens. Uh, let me erase this tag here and then read in, read out. I'm now in the mathematics part of this. So uh, usually what uh, you're asked to is to either say, for example, graph it and also what happens in the long run if this process continues for several days or hours or whatever. Uh, let's see, first of all, uh, let's graph this thing. So, at time zero, it is uh, 20. At time zero, it is 20. Uh, well, look, this 20, let's bring this down. So this 20 is somewhere here. And it starts growing, right? It starts growing, grow, grow, grow. Does it grow indefinitely? But even physically, it's assuming that it grows indefinitely it means that the density will uh, become in infinite. So it's like the whole uh, tank will be just salt. Okay, so, but it doesn't seem to, it doesn't seem that that is going to uh, physically. So what happens is, in fact, uh, as t goes to infinity, this is in fact the time axis, so this is the time axis, and the q axis here. So as time goes to infinity, what happens? This becomes zero. E to the power minus infinity is zero, 80 times zero is zero, so it approaches 100. So it approaches 100. So limit of QT as T goes to infinity is in fact 100 minus zero, which is 100. Uh, kilograms. So it starts at 20 and goes up, 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 up until it reaches the 100 kilograms. 
So that is like the behavior at the infinite time infinity. Uh, so these are basically the questions that usually they ask, especially, uh, well, solving it is something then, uh, the, um, say, the, I don't know, maybe the chemistry or physics behind it is they say, okay, what happens in the long run? Because this is going to have to run uh, indefinitely. So uh, we say just in the long run, then nothing happens because uh, if, the, con if uh, the configuration is the same after some time, it really, uh, say, gets closer to 100. In fact, you can tell if t is, say, 5, for example, 6, and then this is a, uh, like 100, that's a huge number, huge negative number. So if t is, say, 10,000, 1 million or whatever, this is. Uh, but it's, it's interesting that in the, if you graph this thing, you see that it doesn't really approach this so quickly. It really takes some time to get close to 100. And why does this happen? Why is it physically happening? Because the density of the salt getting in, this tank was 1,000 uh, cubic meters, say, and uh, the, the salt is entering at some very small rate, 2 kilograms per second. So that's very small. That is very small. So you can guess that uh, in order to go from 20 to 100, it really takes some time. It really takes some time. And this is happening if, if the tank and uh, it was not leaking, say, then yeah, uh, it will it will get. In fact, water is added to that, so the volume is going up. But since it's leaving, and when it's leaving, it, it's taking some salt out of the tank. So. But in the long run, it, uh, it takes, so and we can see, if I added, uh, instead of 2 kilograms per second at the entrance, I would say 200 ki kilograms per second. You would see that these two would go, that's 0.2. So it quickly goes to zero, I mean, it goes to 100, sorry. So it quickly would become 100. Anyway, so that is the first uh, problem that usually the, uh, it is related to, say, uh, linear differential equations. No. Let's see. Another one which is, is also uh, quite nice to study is uh, terminal velocity. So number two is called terminal velocity. velocity and uh, that is if you have an object say uh, large enough so we cannot ignore a resistance it's like when uh, uh, a paratrooper is just coming down as it opens the uh, paratrooper it, it suddenly it slows down it suddenly slows down because the the, the uh, say surface area is much large, quite large in fact, and air goes inside and the air resistance goes up and it suddenly woo and it comes down slowly. In fact, if it doesn't have enough uh, distance from the earth, then it might just hit the ground and die. But if you have enough distance, that's why the airplane was way high up there. So it gives you enough distance, and when you come down with your parachute, then uh, it uh, uh, at some point the velocity becomes fixed constant, and that is called uh, the terminal velocity of the object. Now this terminal velocity, we will see it, it depends on so many things, and one of the things it depends on, in fact, is in fact that air resistance. There is something special the air resistance. Now, air resistance is like this. What is the force? If some object is coming down, this object is a free falling, and we have air resistance here. And uh, so it up exerts a force. What is the force of uh, air resistance force? Uh, well, it's, I mean, they have, they have done 
some experiments that also you can just uh, relate this to aerodynamics and uh, what anyway you can approximate the air resistance with uh, something so if this has velocity v at some point if the velocity is a function of time uh, they say that this air resistance force ar say force of ar is in fact some constant times v it's some constant times v which means uh, as v gets larger and larger then this force is gets larger so the force the air resistance force is larger than the velocity is more it's like a uh, seat belt if you pull it slowly it just comes out if you push it pull it boom it, it, it stops uh, so it's something like that if you, if it goes fast then uh, air resistance uh, force will be much higher Okay, now if I uh, draw the free body diagram of this thing, we have a, this has some mass, so there is a force which brings this down, the gravitational force mg. Then let's assume that it has acceleration uh, a and velocity v, and uh, a resistance goes this way, and f a resistance is cv. It's uh, better to write down the equation of motion in terms of velocity, not acceleration, because this force is a function of, uh, say, v. Although you can write it as c times, uh, say, y star, s star, whatever that is. Now, I, I saw that in the book, it uses uh, this thing. It says, okay, let's assume that this is point O, my reference, say, I'm not sure if it takes the reference from here to the other side. But anyway, let's say this is the positive direction, and uh, this is S. This distance from 0 to this point is S at time something. Okay, so let's uh, write down equation of motion. Uh, I have MA equals F. M A is the derivative of velocity by T, and F is in fact M G is in the positive direction. Remember, I took A to be in this direction, so this is positive here. But the A resistance is negative, so minus C V. So I have M D V D T plus C V equals M G. And if I divide by m, I have dv dt plus c over m v equals g. And this is equation of motion of this thing. And you can see it is a first order linear differential equation. So first order linear differential equation. Okay, so this is in fact uh, if there is no air resistance, dv dt is g, right? So uh, let's see if uh, we, we can solve this thing. So let's uh, erase these things and uh, yeah, let's erase here. And this is a simply what I'm doing. We can just keep this. Uh, let's keep this. So uh, this. The integrating factor, which is in uh, Calc 2 book, it is IT, it is mu t in Calc 4. No difference. So, IT integrating uh, factor is in fact e to the power integral of pt dt, integral of pt dt. What is pt here? pt is this. It's just a constant. So, e to the power integral. Uh, c over m dt, which is e to the power c over m t. <sighs> okay, now v becomes v as a function of time is 1 over i t, which is e to the power c over m t times integral. This is g, the right hand side, times this thing e to the power c over m t dt. Uh, plus some uh, constant. Uh, I, I have a C here, so let's write the constant as just K. Okay, so K, that K is the constant. 
Uh, okay, so this g is fixed, so this will be, this simply is m over c e to power c over m t times g uh, plus some constant k. So, Uh, this is divided by this, so v of t will be g m over c uh, plus k e to the power minus c over m t. Okay, so that is the end result, except I need this k. So how can I find k? Uh, this differential equation is on velocity, so let's look at velocity at certain time. Uh, if if you keep it here and at time zero let it go, that's a free fall. So at time zero, the, it doesn't have any velocity. The velocity of this thing is zero at time zero. So physically, or let's say physics and some assumption about how you keep it or how you let it go, in what situation do you let it go? Uh, so let's assume that assume that the velocity at time zero is zero. So this gives me zero equals gm over c plus k. e to the power zero is one, so k becomes minus gm over c. So k is minus gm over c, and uh, this gives me velocity at time t is uh, there's a g over c and minus g over c. I can write g over c as 1 minus e to the power minus c over m t. So that is, in fact, the e equation for velocity. Okay. That is velocity at any time. But you can see this velocity is related to this constant and also e to the power minus c over mt. So this looks, if, if c is too high, if, I don't know, so, uh, at a certain climate it might be high, I, I don't know about that, but if c is high or m is small, for example, then that minus c over m is uh, big. So, And as, as a negative big, as time goes on and on, that will become a big negative and that will give me zero. So as t goes to infinity, uh, let me uh, erase this and uh, give you the terminal velocity. So uh, v terminal is in fact a limit of this velocity as t goes to infinity. And uh, as t goes to infinity, I have gm over c times 1 minus 0. So it is gm over c. So the terminal velocity is g times m over c. And you see if uh, c is large or m is, uh, c is large, how do you make c large? If the uh, object has a large surface, like a para parachute, uh, if it has a large surface. So V goes up uh, when the surface area is larger. Okay, and another way is just the, this M. So if M is uh, too small, then that reaches uh, uh, that uh, in the terminal velocity, say, a small terminal velocity. So, yeah. So that's why uh, a smaller object like an ant, for example, when it dropped, I that's why I think it doesn't die. <laughs> it's a very small object, so it doesn't have that large terminal velocity. Uh, so uh, there are other things that we can ask. For example, they say find S of t. So how do you find S t uh, in general? If there are some assumptions made, for example, where a, where you throw it up in the air, you just throw it at this uh, distance, height or at this height, at this height, at this height, then you have s at time zero. So 
you can in fact do this. So we just say I know that ds dt is in fact the velocity. This is a simple separable equation. So I have ds equals vt dt, and uh, I can integrate from zero to time t ds. And on this side I have zero to time t vt dt. There is no constant if you this is this is definite integral there is no need for a constant okay so if it's indefinite integral then you need a constant this is definite integral uh, it has limits so this this one will give me s uh, s of t uh, from zero to t on this side uh, the uh, erased v uh, v t was uh, mg over c, was it gm over c times 1 minus e to the power minus c over mt. If I'm correct. So let's assume I didn't uh, that was c over yeah. So and then g over c that was g over c and g oh, anyway. So uh, and uh, integrating this this guy here. Uh, will give me, let's just write mg over c outside, it is t, uh, uh, well let's write, not t, let's write something else, uh, let's write the dummy variable to be something else, uh, I wrote r, so let the dummy variable be something else, not this t, don't confuse with the t, so this is sr, sr from 0 to t, and on this side I have uh, r, say, uh, plus m over c uh, e to power minus c over m r and this is from 0 to t okay so on this side I have s at time t minus s at time 0 on the other side I have uh, mg over c times uh, when r is t I have t plus m over c e to power minus c over m t zero will give me uh, what e to power zero so that is in fact minus uh, m over c because e to power zero is one and uh, this is zero and that is one so I will get this so s at time t minus s at time zero is uh, oh, let's uh, write this uh, separately that's mg t uh, times t plus m over c e to power minus c over m t my, uh, times that I will get minus m squared g over c m squared g over c so this is a very distance traveled s at time t minus s at time zero that is a distance traveled so if it is negative it's a, uh, uh, like it's going up or positive is going down but anyway i think it's positive anyway so uh, so this is distance traveled that is if they ask for distance traveled this is the uh, formula for distance traveled okay so that was uh, and you can see the only thing that matters here is the m and no, g. I think that I made the c squared here. C squared. So it is m and c. The g we assume that g is fixed. Oh, so um, uh, these are some applications. You might see some more applications among the problems assigned to you. And uh, you know, most often the model is given to you, but in real real life. There is no model. You have to find the model yourself. And in fact, that is why you are, say, the employee mathematician or something uh, in, in certain places to just give them a model. Okay, so let me stop and uh, see you next time.